This is video number one for Access Module 1 in the Shelley Cashman textbook on Microsoft Office 365. We're on page 1-5. This is on creating a database. So if Access is not already on your taskbar or it's not on your start menu over here, you can always find it by going to the search button here and typing in Access. Now I've already got Access there because I've used it recently, but it may not be there on your computer. So all you have to do is type in access and probably the first few letters are enough and then go ahead and either click on it or click on open and it'll start up access for us. We want to start off with a blank database. So click on blank database up here. Wants a name for the database. The name for this database is going to be CMF vets. Go ahead and click on create. Now let's flip over to page 1-6. Page 1-6 talks about creating a database using a template. We are not doing that right now, so you can read that over, but we're not going to do those steps. We're going to skip over to page 1-7. A database is basically a collection of tables, and if you've used Excel, you know what a table is. It's just rows and columns with uh, data in individual cells. When you're designing a table for a database, you need to decide what kind of data goes in each column. One of the rules is that the same type of data has to be in every cell in a column. You can't put a number in one cell and then right below it put in some text. It's got to be consistent all the way down. So you need to decide what kind of data is going to go in each field. We've got some basic data types. Uh, there's a text data type. Uh, there is a currency data type. There's a number data type. There's a date and time data type. Access has something called a yes-no data type in which you can put the values true or false. This is frequently called a Boolean data type. And there are some other ones, but these are the most common ones. So we are going to create a table in data sheet view. We're now on page 1-9. And actually, we're going to flip over to page 1-10. And we're going to have a table structure. So we need to figure out what the columns are going to be. We're going to have an ID column. We're going to have a first name column, last name, street, city, state, postal code, home phone, mobile phone, and email address. So we've got a blank database here. We've got table number one, which would have to be renamed to something more descriptive once we figure out what's going to go in it. And we also have column headings here, and we're going to rename the column headings. We can right-click on this and choose Rename Field. Name this field is supposed to be Owner ID. After you type that in, click outside the box someplace. We need to change the data type. The default here is Auto Number. We're going to put short text in there. Flip over to page 1-12. There's a field size here. Short text can go up to 255 characters, but you can also put a limit on it to save space. We're going to make this five characters long. Go ahead and type five and hit enter. Click on the name and caption button. The name of the field will come up. We've already typed that in, but you can have a caption that will show up when you do printouts of this. And the caption for this is going to be O underscore ID. And we're going to put in a description down here in the description box. And this is going to be unique identifier of pet owner. Go ahead and click on OK or hit the Enter key when you're done. We need more columns in our table. So we're going to click on the Click to Add button here. This is also going to be a short text field. The name is going to be Owner First Name. Field 1 is the default here. We're going to type on top of that. Go ahead and hit Enter. On this one, we're going to change the field size to, click back on this column, we're going to change the field size to 50. And then we're going to add some more columns. We're going to do last name, street, city, state, zip code, home phone, mobile phone, and email address fields. And they're all going to be short text. And we're going to take a look at an easier way to do this right now. We're going to go to a table over here and right click on it and choose design view. For the table. We'll call it table one until the author tells us to call it something otherwise. And this is a much easier way to do it. So we're going to type in the field name in the first column. We're going to type in the data type in the second column. The remaining fields are owner last name, owner street, owner city, owner state, owner postal code, home phone, mobile phone, and email address field. So I'm going to type those in. And you can just hit the tab key to go from one cell to another. These are all short text fields. 
we need to set the size for each one. When you're in this view, design view, you can go down here and this is where you specify the field size. So to get the field sizes, we need to look on page 1-10 and the owner first name is going to be 50. We've already done that. Click down on the next one for owner last name and go down here to field size. We're going to make that 50 as well. Just tab out of it when you're done. Go to owner street. Size for street is going to be 255. That's the default, so we can leave that. Go to owner city. We're going to allow 50 characters for that, so go down to the field size and type in 50. Let's go to the next one, owner state. And that's going to be a two character field. We're going to use two letter abbreviations for our state names. Postal code can be a maximum of nine digits. We're going to put a nine in there. Home phone, we're going to allow up to 25 characters for that, although I'm not sure why we need that many. Mobile phone, we're going to do the same thing, 25. I can just go and knock the five off the end here by hitting the backspace key. And then email address, we're going to allow up to 50 characters for that one. So let's go down here, delete the 255, and type in the number 50. So now everything matches the table on page 1-10. Now we're going to go to the top of page 1-14. And we're going to save the table. Before we save it, we want to rename it. So right click on table over here and choose rename. Okay. When you're in this view, it won't let you do that. So if you get that error message, just click on OK. And you can close out of this view. Just click on the X up here. And now let's go and try and rename the table. So let's choose rename. And now you can type over table one. And the name of this is going to be owners. Go ahead and hit enter when you're done. Don't need to save it. I've already saved it. So our save option is grayed out. Now let's go to the top of page 1-15. We're going to view the table in design view. We just did that. So let's flip over to page 1-16. Click the close button for the owner's table to close. We've already closed it, so we could put the name in up here. Now we're going to add records to the table. We're going to right click the owner's table here. We're going to choose open. So we've got an empty row here for the first record in our table. We're going to type in the data that's on page 1 17. When you get done with the first row, just hit the tab key. It'll open up a new record for you. You can type in the data for the second record. Okay, hit tab at the end of that line. It'll open up room for a third record. So we've done everything now through page 1-19. We're down on number 7 at the bottom. It says click the close button for the owner's table. That's just the X up here. Go ahead and close it. And go ahead and exit access. One thing about a database that's different from other applications is you generally do not have to save at the end. As you make changes to the database, they automatically get saved out to the disk. So we can just exit access here and don't have to worry about saving it. Everything has already been saved. I'm not going to exit. I'm going to stay here. And we're going to flip over to page 1-22. We want to open the CMF Vets database from our hard drive. It's already open. We want to right-click the owner's table and choose open. It'll show us all of the records. We should match what's at the bottom of page 1-22 now. Now we're on number 4 at the bottom of page 1-22. Point to the right boundary of the field selector for the owner first name so that the pointer arrow becomes a two-headed arrow. Double-click it. So it looks like every almost everything fits here, but uh, some of the titles don't fit. So let's get a, get a two-headed arrow here. Double-click, just like in Excel. Looks okay. This one, a little bit more. A little bit. Okay. Close the table. If it asks you about saving the changes to the layout, go ahead and choose yes. Otherwise, next time you open this table, the columns will be narrow again. Okay, and that looks like a good place to end video number one.